All right, what are all these little boxes? Um, everybody seems to enjoy my LED videos, so I thought I'd shoot a little more things about LEDs. Um, these are LED demo boxes. So what is, a, what is a demo box? A demo box is if you have an LED and you want to light one up, and you shove it in a box and push the button and it lights up. Uh, let's see if here, turn this off so you can see it light up. Okay, so um, why why do I have these little boxes? Um, it's a combination of uh, just liking them, um, being a pack rat, being a dumpster diver, and being at the right place at the right time. So um, I worked at Hewlett Packard straight out of school, 1980, straight out of school. My very first job was in an LED company. Hewlett Packard was banking LEDs. Um, I worked for the Opto Electronics Division of Hewlett Packard, um, where we were making LEDs, back then red ones, and starting to make other colors, but uh, mostly red ones. Um, and so if you were a, were a field sales engineer and you went out to try to sell LEDs, you need to, to demonstrate them. And so the field sales engineers might get a box like this, and he'd have a bag of LEDs, and he could go out and turn on the LEDs and show the customer you know, what they were. You could you could put them in different places here on this little socket. So this gives you two milliamps, and this gives you 50 milliamps, so much, much brighter. And uh, you could put two LEDs side by side to measure them, see if they're kind of the same or different, if you wanted to compare to. Um, so I have a whole collection of these little boxes, and they range from the 19, maybe the late 1970s or 80s, early 80s into the 2000s. And, uh, several companies. So let's take a look at these. Um, the oldest box that I have, let's move these out of the way here. The oldest box that I have is this one. This one probably dates from the late seventies to early eighties of Hewlett Packard. And you could put an LED in the little socket and then push the button and it would light up. I'll take all these boxes apart later on so we can see what's inside of them. But uh, this one went from two milliamps to 50 milliamps. And uh, yeah, this one is quite old and rare. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen another one of these. Um, and then also by Hewlett Packard were, were these. These were a little bit more modern vintage. These are probably 1990s, I would guess. Um, and uh, they would guess there was two versions, a blue one and a, and a white one. I think they're the same inside, but once again, you could put in, put in the LED and push the button. Oh, that doesn't have batteries in it. Put in the LED, push the button, and yeah, there you go. Um, so I've got three of those. And then uh, there's this one, which is a very old one as well. Uh, it doesn't have batteries on it, so I can't, I can't just show this one. But it has a, a, a knob that you can change the DC current from 2 milliamps to 30, 30 milliamps. And left and right, those two knobs. So that was kind of cool. And this one has an external power source, so uh, instead of using instead of using batteries, I think he used an external power source on that one. Uh, the next one is something I bought. Uh, I don't remember what company I bought this from, but I was shocked that you could actually buy them. I thought they were just something that we that we built, but uh, this company had them and sold them as something you could buy. Um, made by Lumix, the Opto Opto components incorporated. They were probably just a reseller of LEDs and things. Um, blink. Ooh, what's Blink? Is it Blink? Uh, I don't know. Blink, blink works anymore. Does this one Blink? No, Blink doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why it says Blink. Maybe there's a circuit inside the Blinks, but I don't see it. No, I don't see it. Anyway, there's that one. And then there's this one, which uh, I had to have because it had a surface mount section. So it had a regular section over here. Um, shove your LED in and it lights right up. No need for a switch because the circuit's not working unless the LED's in it. So you're not drawing any current until the LED's put in. So why have a switch? And then it's got this little area over here that allows you to take a surface mount 
LED like this one. Let me make sure I have it the right way around. I think this will work. And then you move it over to where you can kind of gap gap the uh, thing there and the traces. And let me get, I guess I can push on it with this LED here. If I push down on it and I try to get, ah, that didn't work. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure it goes like this. Well, maybe not. Is that the plus side? Nope. Is that the plus side? Pretty sure that's the plus side or the minus side. Uh, well, maybe I have it wrong way around. So this, oh, there it goes. There it goes. You see it? All right. <laughs> I turn off the room light. So this is a white, a white one. So obviously it doesn't work very, very easily. Uh, you do have to push on it. And when you're pushing on it, you kind of get in the way. So anyway, <laughs> that was a, maybe a fail there. Um, I've hardly ever used it, so. And maybe the PC board's a little corroded too. But anyway, that one's interesting. I don't know where about I don't know where I bought either one of these, but uh, these were for sale, and you could buy them. And the other ones were made in house. Um, the next one I'm going to show is also made in house, but this one is a much more recent vintage. This one's probably done in the 19 in the 2000s um, by uh, Luxion. So. In 1980, I was working for Hewlett Packard making LEDs, and then I did a whole bunch of other stuff in my career. And the very last job I had before I retired, I retired in 2014, I was working for LumiLeds, which is um, making LEDs again, making blue ones this time, now white ones. And this was kind of a giveaway, not just not just uh, fuel sales engineers had this, but we would give these away to customers. So it's a little cardboard box, and it had some LEDs in it, and you can push the buttons in different Different colors would light up. Ooh, fancy. We have different colors now. So back in 1980, we had red ones. And now in 2000 and something, we've got all kinds of colors. White, red, yellow, green, cyan, and blue. So. All right. Let's open this up and see what's inside. Okay, let's uh, let's look inside the boxes to see what's inside there. We'll start with uh, an oldie, the oldies uh, first, and then we'll go up to the modern ones. So here's the uh, the oldest one, I'm sure, and let's take a peek inside this one. This must have been. If I had to guess, I'd say this one was built in the very late 70s, um, probably 78, 79, something like that. I doubt that it was built any any later than that, early 80s maybe, but I don't think so. I think this is a 70s. So it's got uh, uh, AA batteries, so four and a half volts, and then it has a bunch of bunch of resistors. That's all it's got. So. Anywhere from two milliamps to 50 milliamps, we have uh, we have resistors across four and a half volts. Oh, that's how it works. It's got a switch on it, which, which is hot hot melt glued, hot melt glued in, and uh, a black PC board that does the wiring. And um, this the resistors were soldered flat on the board so there was no through holes to mess up the nice looking front panel. So. The PC board does the job of electrical stuff and the front panel um, for the box. So, okay. All right, put that one over over to side over to the side. Uh, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at this one. Um, so this is the one that. Uh, that I bought, uh, I, I maybe DigiKey, maybe I don't. Maybe DigiKey wasn't even around back then. Nah, probably not DigiKey. Probably some other company. Um, but uh, it says Lumix 
optical opto component so i doubt that they they made any leds but they were a reseller they would buy people's leds and then resell them it has a nine volt battery inside this one and once again just a bunch of leds uh, uh resistors of different types for one to 50 milliamps and it has its own little led now see this is a green led so green LEDs weren't available until maybe 1983, 84. Um, so this is a mid 80s, mid 80s to 90s uh, box, um, but it just uses uh, just uses resistors. Let's uh, make sure I don't lose these screws. Those go together. Now another box that I bought was was this one the one that does the uh does the uh, surface mount stuff on it we saw that and uh, it comes apart with two screws and oh very nice very very nice it uses resistor packs instead of individual resistors it uses resistor packs 150 330 680 1500 and 3300 uh, ohms across nine volts and that gave you all of the currents that you needed. So again, it works with a nine volt battery. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so we've done that one. We did that one. We did that one. Okay, so let's go to a more modern box. Um, this is the uh, uh, Hewlett Packard box. It looks pretty nice. I'd say this was built in the 90s, 1990s. And uh, this has like really cool HP engineering in it. <laughs> it has actual ICs to drive all the different currents. So it's gonna be very accurate, um, depending on which resistors they got, but probably pretty accurate. It uses LM317. So each of these chips is a three terminal regulator in an SO, SO8 package. All surface mount. So once again, this was probably built in the late 90s. Um, and if you go to the data sheet for an LM317 and look up constant current source, you'll see that if you put a, a resistor between the adjustment pin and the output pin, what you're doing is you're forcing the resistor to have 1.25 volts across it and you choose the value of the resistor to give you the current you need. So these, these make really, really nice current, uh, uh, constant current sources. Great for charging batteries and stuff. So take a look at the LM317 constant current source. Um, so very, very nice. Um, so it has a PC board inside. It also uses a PC board as artwork on the outside. Um, but that's how that one works. All right. So we've hooked at all of those. So let's look at the oldest one. One of the oldest ones, I guess. Maybe maybe the first one we saw was the oldest one. This one's definitely the same type of vintage. So this one I've already taken apart because it takes a long time to take it apart. Um, this is the one that had the uh, knobs on the outside. So there's a PC board with a PC board connector that attaches the two boards together. Um, I had to take the knobs off to get it apart and uh, this this then came out and we see that um, there's a quite a bit of circuitry on this board now now there's there's also two wires on the back and these two wires aren't hooked to anything but there might have been a um, uh, battery holder in it that was removed or fell out <laughs> um, it looks like this thing is toasty uh, it, it got burnt. The PC board's burnt here, so it definitely probably came back and they said, hey, can you repair this? And the guy said, no, I'll throw it in the junk bin. Here's a new one. I got one in my, in my drawer and never fixed this one. There's a, there's a uh, resistor here that's completely charred and uh, there's a couple diodes here that don't look like they're very good either. Um, this is interesting. This is a bridge rectifier. So uh, this one has batteries in it, but also probably eat, eat, eats a lot of current. So this one had a way to plug it in on the outside. It had a uh, uh, a jack here for a wall wart, um, probably a uh, HP calculator um, a wall wart, since those be, would be available um, to HP people. Um, 
and it was probably AC, so it came into this uh, three, um, bridge rectifier that, that made it into DC. And then there's a 7809, so a 9 volt 3 terminal regulator. So it regulated everything to 9 volts, and then it would be like one of the other boxes with a 9 volt battery. And then this one had some ICs and some transistors. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight transistors and two ICs and some SIP packages for resistance and another SIP package here for resistance. This one is a, looks like 1K ohm and these are something other, maybe 390 ohms. Anyway, uh, very interesting, um, very complicated. Um, I don't know exactly what these chips are. HP used internal part numbers. Um, there were 1820 something and 1826 something. The 1820 dash numbers were for digital ICs, the 1826 dash numbers were for um, analog ICs. So this might be op amps, might be two quad op amps or something. I don't. I don't know um, to investigate that, but yeah, this one's quite, quite sophisticated, quite complicated. Uh, I never, I never actually saw one of these while I was working there. I saw the other ones, but I never, I never did actually see this one. So this one probably predates me. So probably late seventies, maybe. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a date code, 1981. So, okay. So early eighties, um, but I never saw one. So I, I don't know. I joined in 1980. So. I might have been able to see one, but I never did. Anyway, that's all my little boxes for resistors, I mean for uh, LEDs, and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, oh wait, I, I think I missed one. I missed one. I'm sorry. This is the uh, other box. These were, these probably quite a few of these boxes were built. The other ones are probably very, very few boxes were built and given only to sales engineers. This one, though, I think was handed out as a, a promotional uh, to try to get people interested in the company and uh, lots of different, lots of different colors. Um, and this one is just the PC board. It has a, um, a cardboard box and it has a nine volt, a nine volt battery. Uh, and it has an IC though. It is surface mount as resistors along the side here and it has a surface mount part which is a ULN 2803. So that was a, probably a Darlington driver ship. So the switches uh, act on the Darlingtons and the Darlingtons then turn on the transistors. So uh, pretty fancy. I don't know why you wouldn't just use the switch, but yeah. it wasn't me designing it. Looks pretty nice. Anyway, those are the boxes I have. Um, like I said, they're fairly rare, I think. Um, if, any, if anybody knows of a box that I don't have, <laughs> let me know. Uh, maybe there's some, somebody out there that's got uh, another brand name or uh, you could buy them somewhere. I don't know. 